Hello everyone and welcome to the final one of our videos on the balance of payments. This one's all about policies to correct current account imbalances. Now there's a number of ways in which we can categorise policies. On this side they're split into policies aimed at demand management and policies aimed at bringing about supply side improvement. So on the demand side, first of all, uh, we might have policies aimed at tightening fiscal or monetary policy. Um, and the thought here is that this would reduce the real spending power of consumers and that this in turn would lead to lower imports. It's possible as well that policies might be aimed at reducing the exchange rate and improving price competitiveness and the higher price of imports should make them more expensive. On the supply side, we might have policies aimed at improving labour productivity, encouraging startups with export potential, investments in human capital to boost productive potential and competitiveness, especially in high value industries. Um, with some countries, though, it's possible that you would be looking at protectionist measures of some sort. So these might be quotas or tariffs, but do remember there are constraints over what the UK can do in this area, even though it is leaving the EU. So um, some of our policies as well can be split into expenditure switching policies and expenditure reduction policies. So the expenditure switching, first of all, these are policies designed to change the relative prices of exports and imports. An example here is an exchange rate depreciation. Expenditure reducing policies, well, these are designed to lower real incomes and aggregate demand and therefore cut the demand for imports. So examples here might be higher rates of tax or an increase in interest rates. So thinking tasks for you then. So what we've got here are some expenditure switching policies. And what I'd like you to do is to try and add in some evaluative comments for each one of these. Pause the video for five or so minutes while you have a really good think about this. Welcome back everyone. So let's have a look at the sort of evaluative comments I have got. So first of all, depreciating the exchange rate. Well, a, a good evaluative comment here will be that this really does risk cost push inflation. And obviously this is going to erode competitiveness and uh, mean that real incomes fall. Let's have a look at the next one, import tariffs. Well, the risk here is one of retaliation. And a lower rate of inflation, perhaps even deflation. Well, the risks from deflation are great. And it may be especially that you see things like lower investment, and this is going to cause problems with um, your competitiveness further down the line. Some more on this slide. So what I've got here are examples of expenditure reducing policies. And I'd like you to do the same thing again. Pause the video for a couple of minutes and add in your evaluative 
comments. Welcome back everyone. So let's have a look at what I have got. So my first expenditure reducing policy was an increase in income tax. And the risk here is that this will affect living standards and damage work incentives in the labor market. Uh, my second expenditure reducing policy is cuts in the real level of government spending and a possible evaluative comment here is the damage to short run economic growth. And again, the risk that this type of policy, this type of austerity will hit investment that is going to have consequences further down the line, as we've said before, for competitiveness. So let's look then at supply side policies. It's really important in all of this that policies to reduce a deficit should focus on the underlying causes and should think especially about whether it is cyclical or structural. So let's have a look at the contents of this slide. So microeconomic supply side policies, if they work, are going to increase the productivity and competitiveness of the economy. It's going to make your exports more competitive, perhaps in both price and non-price terms, and reduce dependency on imported products. Uh, it might be that you could improve tax incentives to encourage investment in human capital and business innovation. Stronger, higher level skills and knowledge uh, may drive an expansion of sunrise industries with strong export potential. And innovation, it's really important in improving both the price and non-price competitiveness in global markets and actually letting a country respond to shocks and develop new comparative advantage in higher value added sectors if that proves necessary. Um, as good supply side performance as well, that might well mean that you're a country that is very attractive to foreign direct investment. And that's going to have all sorts of benefits, not least improving your long run aggregate supply and export capacity. So a thinking task for you and the final task in this series of videos, an essay question that I'd like you to have a look at. Evaluate the micro and macroeconomic policies that might be effective in reducing the UK's current account deficit. So have a go at that essay and show what you have done to your teacher so that you are sure you are along the right lines. There we are, that is the end to our series of videos on the balance of payments.